Good morning, everyone. It's again um, <clears throat> September the 8th, 2023, October. And uh, <laughs> you can tell it's Sunday morning, first thing in the morning, because when I started with that story that I just finished, um, I forgot something <laughs> to talk about it. And when I wanted to talk about Daisy, and I wanted to also explain something about the young man, again, who was uh, raped at the age of six, that um, when I watched those uh, uh, body cams and stuff coming in from the police body cams from the United States and that, where this, uh, uh, which I mentioned in a, a video a couple of videos back, uh, where a young eight-year-old boy, uh, the uh, dog uh, burst in, well, they broke the door down the police, the dog burst in, and they rescued an eight-year-old boy who was being used for child pornography. And the dog was able to sniff out the electronics that actually convicted and sent this man to jail. Well, what I wanted to do was uh, explain that how wonderful these dogs are. And this was a wonderful story of Daisy. Now, Daisy herself was so well trained. Now, she was trained to literally guide uh, a blind man. That was her job. That was her training. And yet, beyond all odds, and she followed her training and led all these hundreds, a total of 967 people out of this burning inferno who were basically blinded themselves by all the smoke uh, that was coming through the building and the towers before they came down. And she got them out safely. So it's very important, and this is what I'm thinking to this young man who talked to me. Uh, I also wanted to express that I'm sure I know how I felt when my boys told me what happened to them. But I, th I just feel like I wish I had, well, just ordinary pet dogs, but I wish they could have talked. Well, that would have been helpful. But in this particular case, where this young boy at eight was saved by these police officers, this is where the dogs followed their training. Daisy followed her training to do, and I'm sure that that young man that talked to me, he would have preferred to have a dog come bark, tearing through the door with police officers coming in after him to rescue him from his abuser. So this is one of the reasons why I wanted to say I actually advocate so highly for the dogs because I look at how many people Daisy here saved and when I look at the police dogs and that, I wonder if we did not have the police dogs, how many lives would we not have saved? How many lives, can, can we ever count how many lives we've probably saved with having the dogs? So I just, I also wanted to add that to the story. And I, like I said, I can't live even without Heidi. I mean, Heidi, as my service dog, there's some days getting out of a chair is difficult with the arthritis. I just, I get into a certain position and then I go stiff as a board and getting up is hard. So she does the simplest thing sometimes is just, I can grab onto the handle on her harness and she helps to pull me out of the chair and on my feet. So she keeps me on my feet. So sometimes it's just the smallest thing that these dogs can do that help people. But this was one that was well worth passing on to people what happened in 9-11 that shook the entire world. And um, I can give you another little footnote on 9-11 after we're trying to all come to terms with a shock of uh, the attack on on the United States and they had to um, shut down their, their airspace and we brought their planes down safely at our airports and as we have uh, far from away. I also wanna remind people that the New York was devastated they lost, I don't know how many fire trucks, they certainly lost so many police cruisers when the buildings came down that my oldest son at the time was uh, working for Ford on the dealership here in Ottawa when they came up from the States and uh, they cleaned uh, Ottawa out of uh, uh, cars. They bought the cars as fast as they could. They, uh, people volunteered to drive those cars down to New York City because they had to replace their police cars as quickly as possible. So why does it take a disaster for everyone to come together and do something? Like the homeless is a disaster right now, uh, what I'm seeing. And that's the other thing I wanted to also mention too is about the bullying. 
a lot of these people have a chip on their shoulder. Yes, they have mental problems too, but if something happens and they're suffering from trauma, with this chip on their shoulder, they also take it out on other people. They don't always mean to at times, but they do because they keep it inside. And that's the worst thing you can do. And even Julie said, I'm so glad that I've got you to talk to, and that's referring to me, about things because you understand. I said, yes, I understand because I've been through a lot myself, but I've been through some counseling. And I've often told Julie if she needs counseling, she, maybe she should uh, talk to a counselor too. And then she looked and she said, you know, with all these people that are bullying me, and I know they're jealous of me because I'm standing up for myself, I'm coming out of this, but if only they take time to realize what they really need is counseling and, and services to help them come out of the situation that they're in, then this would really, really help them. Because I've had people coming on constantly telling me over the months that I have been doing the uh, videos here, how much Julie has changed. And yes, she has. She's a much better person for it. And I'm proud of Julie for coming forward and telling her story. And hopefully more people can tell her stories as well. There's many different ways of doing it. And hopefully you've got a good friend that will just give you an ear and listen. And sometimes that's all it, all it takes is that. Other times something so traumatic happens, like in Julie's case, and no one ever really reached out to help her. They sort of gave her a handout, but nobody did the right thing to help her. And she ended up in a lot of difficulties where she is today. But she's putting her life back together. She's fighting hard to get a place to live. And she deserves a place to live. She's actually putting her life together. And I think people like that deserve that second chance. And society is not giving people even a second chance. And that's not fair today. So this again, I just wanted to briefly bring a little bit more forward. And thank you very much for talking, uh, well, to listening to me today. Because I decided I needed to shoot off my mouth once in a while too. But I think it's for a good cause. So <laughs> everyone have a nice day. Take care. And again, we shall see you too soon. And we shall talk again. Okay, bye-bye. Take care.